look like this uh, with uh, visualized symptoms. Uh, and I see a face here uh, from uh, among the original participants of that seminar uh, 24 years ago. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Islam. Um, I, I don't have a formal paper uh, with me. I, I will share with you some retrospective and possibly prospective reflections. Uh, Istvan Reb um, uh, mentioned the historiographical context um, against which uh, the essay uh, reacted. And uh, this was very appropriate, and I will come back to this. But uh, I would like to say something about uh, the micro context, the micro political context in which uh, uh, the essay was originally written. And this is something which I forgot, pressed for many years, and then came to my mind uh, quite recently. And so I started. Uh, uh, think again about it. So the essay was uh, um, published in uh, the form you, some of you read it, in 1979. However, a, an earlier version, much shorter, was published in, in Italian in 1978. The essay was written uh, in 1977, and I gave a seminar in Bologna in, uh, um, uh, in 1977, based on my ongoing work. Um, the earlier uh, uh, version included only the um, beginning, dealing with uh, those three characters, two of them uh, mm, real, one of them uh, fictitious, meaning uh, Giovanni Morelli, the um, Italian uh, connoisseur and art historian, uh, Sigmund Freud, and Sherlock Holmes. The expansion uh, uh, came later. Now, I was speaking about a political context. 1977 was a very tense year in Bologna, um, and in Europe as well. Um, and actually I remember um, looking at images of an industrialist kidnapped by uh, the bottom line of truth and uh, thinking about uh, the role played by images in, uh, at that time, um, there was a sort of a semiological guerrilla, somebody said, um, which was going on. And I started thinking about uh, semiology also because my students were also Umberto Eco students um, learning about semiology in Bologna in 1977. Um, I thought that my approach to science uh, was different, much more historical, and uh, I started to make reflections uh, um, on uh, Morelli and Freud and so on, and so that was, uh, let's say, the original context, although the year after, Aldo Moro, the Christian uh, uh, Democrat politician, was kidnapped, and so there was a sort of remake of the um, photographs used by the Red Brigades and so on and so forth. So that was very much the context in which um, let's say my reflections uh, 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 started. Now, the essay as such um, has, I think, uh, three layers. Two of them quite evident, the third one is hidden. The first layer is a sort of historical approach to, let's say, science. Um, let me give you a very short resume. Um, I started with, uh, let's say, Morelli. Uh, Morelli um, uh, uh, was, a, as I said, a connoisseur and an art historian, and uh, he developed a technique, a method, if you like, to identify um, paintings by so-called old masters and copies, copies of them. And he said that 
we, when we try to, make, to identify an original as distinguished by, uh, from a copy, we should not look at uh, um, uh, prominent um, features like, uh, I don't know, the smile in uh, um, Leonardo's paintings and so on and so forth. We should look for minor details like earlobes or, or, or uh, nails because uh, uh, those details um, they will be, uh, let's say, will not be uh, um, uh, uh, copied by the copyist uh, in, the exa in, the, uh, in the same way because uh, they are regarded as peripheral and so what is specific about the handwriting, we could say, of the painter is going to be missed in the, in the lost in the copy. Um, so he developed this method, uh, I mean he made some um, really uh, um, uh, Amazing uh, um, uh, identifications, like for instance, uh, what he what he um, uh, wrote about uh, Jonas Venus in uh, in uh, in Dresden. He said uh, th this was regarded as a um, uh, copy made by Sassoferrato of a lost painting by Titian. He said, no, this is Giorgione. Uh, later on, uh, um, X-rays. Uh, uh, proved that uh, the painting fitted with uh, a description made by Michel in the 16th century of a painting by Giorgione, and so on. Now, Morelli was read and, uh, let's say, uh, um, discussed by art historians, but also read by the Bourgeois. There is a copy of Morelli's uh, uh, book on uh, um, the uh, Galleria Borghese paintings, owned by Freud, he bought it in Milan, um, and actually there is a footnote in uh, Freud's uh, essay on uh, uh, Michelangelo's Moses, in which, which was published, which, which was originally published as uh, uh, anonymously. And so Freud uh, uh, speaks about uh, himself and psychoanalysis in the third person. He says that the founder of the psychoanalysis is very grateful as a debt of intellectual gratitude to uh, Giovanni Morelli's work. So the idea of, uh, let's say, uh, as Freud says, of focusing on minor details, repressed details, and we could say that this uh, sort of a handwriting is not part of a deliberate, conscious uh, action by the painter, but something which is, uh, in fact, unconscious. Now, when I, so I started with, uh, let's say, Morelli Freud and Sherlock Holmes, arguing for a um, paradigm sort of a um, late 19th century paradigm based on, on clues. And then the second part, when I started to think about, uh, let's say, the possible expansion of, of, this, uh, of this project, uh, I started to work on the prehistory, and then I discovered, and I still remember the thrill of this, when I discovered the uh, potentialities of the essay as a form, in which you can jump from uh, the late 19th century back to the Neolithic times, and this is part of the genre, or at least part of the potentialities of the genre. So for me this was very, very exciting, and um, I'm still very excited about the, the essay as a, as a, as a form. Um, but, um, so there is a history, let's say, uh, um, about, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, Morelli, uh, Freud uh, reading Morelli, um, uh, Conan Doyle, Conan Doyle's uncle being the director of a uh, uh, Dublin uh, uh, museum uh, reading Morelli and so on and so forth. So, let me a sort of a tight, tight network. Tight network. Um, and then there is this flashback, going back to uh, the Neolithic times, and this is uh, history, or maybe not, or maybe it is conjectural history in the, uh, in the sort of 18th, 18th century uh, uh, um, spirit, um, conjectural history. Uh, about hunters, about hunters, uh, they looking at uh, traces of animals. I, in, a, in two lines, I suggested uh, uh, it was sort of an act of panache. I suggested that the um, possible origins for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, telling a story 
uh, based on looking at traces. This was something which had a sort of uh, uh, curious reception. Uh, Italo Carvino wrote a review. Um, it was quite uh, uh, happy with, with, with this idea. And uh, Antoine Compagnon recently, or later, let's say, uh, wrote about the novel and mentioned this uh, sort of uh, uh, hunter's perspective to the origins of, uh, of, uh, of the novel. And so